Traveler, Paimon, great timing. We got a lot of letters in the mailbox, and I just finished sorting them into four groups. Nice work! Well, the real work hasn't even started yet. Hmm. Which batch of letters should we read through first? Let me quickly summarize what we found out about a flower that is not of this world. Tainari believes that on closer examination it might be logically paradoxical, while Albedo says that his answer would be better discussed at length in person. As for my answer, I think a clock in the shape of a flower would constitute one that is not of this world. Here's what we've gathered regarding a guide who will never get lost. Mona said that she'd like to join us in uncovering the secret behind the prophecy. Well, Bennett suggests Fischl, Mona, or the Traveler as potential candidates. Mika didn't submit much, but he did draw a vegetation map for Master Tainari and wrote up a dragon spotting calendar for Sino. Amber also wrote in. She said that she sees herself as nobody's guide, but everybody's friend. As for one who would never lie, Rosaria removed herself from consideration, but both Razor and Sino were willing to support us in our search. Timaeus seems to have forgotten to write to us. And finally, this is what we've gathered on a legend that never ends. Glee said that her mom has a number of friends who like to write storybooks. Lisa believes that legends live forever in people's hearts. I think that for a legend to be never-ending, it has to be filled with hopes and dreams and actively pass from one person to the next. So, what are the answers to the four riddles then? Uh, you're really smart, Paimon. I bet you can figure it all out in no time. Or... Let's all share our thoughts on what we think the answers might be. Wait! Wait for me! Oh, Timaeus! What brings you here? I'm sorry, I really am. The time just got away from me and I didn't get around to writing that letter. 
However, I'm happy to announce that I think I can be the one who would never lie. Huh? This is kind of sudden. Not that we don't trust you, Timaeus, but, um, could you elaborate a little after you catch your breath? Uh, of course, of course. <sighs> Do you still remember the time I, uh, um, <clears throat> collaborated with a certain Miss Ying R? Well, basically, she helped me out a lot with my research into potion making once, and, well, we've stayed in touch through letters ever since. Wait, so Ying R is the girl from Leela that Sucrose mentioned earlier? We always assumed you were hard at work every time we saw you at the crafting bench. So you've just been writing letters to Ying R the whole time? Uh, no, well, I mean, not all the time. I've done some work too, a and anyway, our correspondence covers a lot of serious topics, like perfumes, potions, alchemy. Anyway, a few months ago, I made a vow to the heavens that I will be true to myself and never utter an insincere word until the day that I've managed to win Miss Ying R's heart. So, at Star Snatch Cliff, you were picking Cecilia's as a gift for Ying R? Well, that's right. The Cecilia flower is said to represent a once wayward heart, transformed by the power of love. I couldn't think of a better flower to give than that. I know full well that Miss Ying R is far more knowledgeable than I in both the ways of the world and the ways of our craft, but I thought I should make the effort for once and put myself out there. Um, which brings me to the subject of the last few days and the Windbloom Festival. I thought it was time for me to invite Miss Ying R to Mondstadt. But yesterday, Albedo told me that Sucrose has been working hard to help another girl achieve her dream. Huh? And when I went to take a look at our roster, I saw that she'd done my remaining work for me. I feel incredibly guilty. I've been spending all of my time in my own fantasy world while everyone else has been bending over backwards to help other people. How could I ever hope to be worthy of Miss Ying R's love if I'm so selfish? Oh, Timaeus. And that's why I've decided to join you. But then what about Ying R? Yeah, haven't you been planning this for over a month now? You said you were going to invite her to Mondstadt. Uh, well, yes. I, I did mention in my letters that I'd like her to visit, which is why I just sent her another gift with my hand-picked wind blooms, along with a handwritten letter. I explained that a matter of great importance has presented itself, to which I must devote my full attention for the time being. As soon as it's resolved, I'll make haste to Liyue to pick her up in person. I made sure to package the gift and letter with the greatest care. All I can do now is hope that she'll understand. Point being, please know that I sincerely want to support you in this endeavor. Plus, I think I'm an honest person. As far as I recall, I don't think I've told a single lie in my life. Well, you certainly convinced Paimon with that speech. Don't worry, Timaeus. We won't let your determination go to waste. Thank you, Timaeus. Oh, thank you, everyone. I promise to do everything I can to help. Okay. So it looks like we found our one who would never lie. Great! Let's keep it up! On to the other three! Okay, Paimon will do the honors. Ahem. We have with us here the flower, the guide, the legend, and Timaeus. Huh? Why did you only say Timaeus' name? You should say my name, too. All right, all right. We also have Klee. That's me! <laughs> With Klee here, this all somehow feels like we're getting ready for a field trip. There's nothing wrong with a more relaxed atmosphere, is there? Of course. We will soon see if my hypothesis has any merit. Actually, I'm still feeling a little nervous. Me too. But weren't you all fired up just a moment ago? Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, let's do this! Actually, I'm a little worried, too. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. I know what you're feeling. Saying anything becomes so much harder when there are so many people watching. 
Well, does anyone know the exact location of where we're headed, or should I do a reading on my scry glass? Hmm. According to the prophecy, once we've figured out the answer, we should test it at the Lantern of Utmost Joy. Wait, but where is this lantern? Oh, we know something about that. What? Wow, that's amazing. You really know how to do everything under the sun. Then we'll let you lead the way. This is it! We're off to find the sacred location of the Lantern of Utmost Joy! According to the map, it should be somewhere around here. Let me take a look. Oh, it should be right up ahead. here. Hmm. Now that I think about it, the prophecy didn't say anything about what the Lantern Upmost Joy actually looks like, right? Maybe we've overlooked something? Traveler, are you trying to figure out something else from the paper? Hyman's reading too! Uh, huh? It says to look up, but, uh, but there's nothing uh, the wind didn't trick us, did it? Place the squirrel on the back of the pointy-eared cat, and a pious puppy will open the doors to show you the way. Huh. Pino read the whole thing out loud, but nothing's happening. <gasps> look! Look! The wind is blowing! What a strong wind current. Uh, let's ride it up and see where it leads us. Huh? W we'll have to fly up there? Uh, can someone carry me with them? Here. down our entire route here. This way, no one will get lost. Oh, good thinking, Kale! Huh. Who would have thought we'd find this kind of table here? Weird. It's almost as if someone was holding a tea party. I never would have guessed that such a place could exist. Right above Mondstadt, too. <gasps> wow, look at that pretty lantern on the table. There's even a chair for each side of the lantern, too. There seems to be something on the back of this chair. Let me have a closer look. Take your seat, present your answers, and you shall reach enlightenment. Well, as far as instructions go, I guess that's simple enough. So we just need to do as it says, right? Wait a second. Huh? What is it, Albedo? We'd better make sure this place is safe before taking our seats. Everyone, please stay clear for a moment. Well, all our questions and doubts aside, the scenery here is pretty amazing. It'd be impossible to feel stressed here. How is everything, Albedo? Hmm, everything seems to be fine. I didn't find any traps or suspicious mechanisms. But I also couldn't find any overt destructive devices. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it seems that wrong answers won't have any catastrophic consequences. Looks like we'll have to sit on these chairs and fulfill the prophecy. Everyone, I would like to suggest that we try some risky answers on our first attempt. Let's reserve our most confident answers for the second round. Of smart, 
But why? Ah, uh, I get what he means. If we do as he says, then we may be able to figure out how the puzzle works. I see. That makes a lot of sense. <sighs> Muna, is there something wrong? You're not looking too good. Oh, are you hungry? I brought some snacks. Thank you for offering, Klee, but that's not quite it. While Albedo was checking just now, I gave my scryglass a spin hoping to find some information. But there's a strange aura to this place. It's almost as if someone has been staring at me as soon as we stepped foot in here. But if nothing here has actually been physically tampered with, then... No. Could that person be... What do you mean, Mona? Who could it be? Uh, never mind. It's not like I've got any proof. Ugh, don't leave us on the edge like this, Mona. Hmm. I'll just do what Albedo said. Yes. Now let's test the hypothesis together, Klee. Mm-hmm. Come on, join us, Mona. Oh, all right. Okay. Then I'll answer the first question. If someone were to ask me to find a flower that is not of this world... You can do it, Sucrose! Um... Then I would fetch a tetratanic sweet flower. Alright, I'm up next. My part of the prophecy is to find a guide who will never get lost. Kali, I hope you found your answer. <sighs> My answer is that I will be that guide. For a long time, I have been guided by others. It's taken me a while, but I finally made it to where I am today. Although I still haven't made a name for myself, and I'm still quite immature, I... I would still like to put my name forward. Because I would like to become a guide that can help others. I want to help others the same way Amber, Master Tainari, Sino, and everyone else helped me. Now it's my turn to pass on the gift that I've been given. All right. It's up to me to answer the third part. I, I, I'll i submit myself as one who would never lie. Although I've never really had any other virtues or talents, I'm confident that I've always been an honest person. I, I'd like to thank everyone, too, for giving me this opportunity to validate myself. And last but not least, I will answer the final part of the prophecy. There's no tale more befitting the title of A Legend That Never Ends than our fates as human beings. Wait! The lantern just lit up! Whoa! All four sides of the lantern are glowing! Huh? But... Kali, could I ask you to stand up for a second? Hmm. Huh? What's going on? Why is it lighting up regardless of who's sitting in the chair? Didn't it say we have to answer all the questions correctly? It's pretty clear now, isn't it? We've just proven that there is no right answer for this prophecy. No right answer? But how could that be? Although the instructions had come from an old and enigmatic prophecy, it is in fact nothing like the ancient mechanism that we had all imagined it to be. I believe the lantern only serves as a simple signal. Ah, and to think. I never expected you to actually find this place. What? There's someone else here? We meet again, Traveler. Hey! You and that Outlander we met the other day at Good Hunter! It's all thanks to you that I was able to find this place. Good thing that you were too preoccupied with the prophecy to notice someone tailing you from the shadows. Oh, is that so? Then, why do I spy yet another person following in your shadow? Wait, really? <sighs> There's no need for pleasantries. You should know I'm here for you. Is it just because I'm a visitor from abroad? I was there when you snuck your way into Marjorie's place. Huh. So you had your eyes on me even then, huh? That was two whole weeks ago, you know. It's hard not to notice you when I'm on duty every day. All right. In that case, I'll admit it. 
I was the person who slipped this prophecy into the storybook. Huh? But why? Then, does that mean this wasn't a real prophecy after all? Don't worry. Even though you probably have plenty of reservations about me, you can be sure that the prophecy is genuine. In fact, many of you here today may have heard the code name of the one who left the prophecy to me. She hailed from an ancient assembly of powerful women, each of whom used a single letter to signify themselves. Who would have guessed? It seems that power was indeed left behind by the old hag after all. Ah, so you're Beast Student. It's an honor to meet you. I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Well, what are you talking about? It's a long story, but I'm not quite sure that I'm the best person to tell it. Since you've all spent so much time and energy trying to decipher this prophecy, you must also be very interested in the secret behind this lantern, though. The lantern has already been lit. Now then, please allow me to disturb your happy peace. Huh. Why did this little thing just light up? How strange. Hello? On the other side of the lantern. Can you hear me over there? Mom? Hmm? Oh, I hear many youthful voices. Madam, I am Scarlet, the successor of Jay. Oh, ahem. <clears throat> Since we've last gathered, Jay's successor has already become so reckless and bold. Unbelievable. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you talking just like the old hag? <sighs> old hag? Who would dare say that? Is that Mona? Who are you? Who dares imitate my master? <clears throat> hmm. And what of imitation and mimicry? It has always been a fool's errand to mimic and learn from humanity. Oh, it's Alice. I'm here too. Mom, why are you trying to talk like other people? Uh, <laughs> so I see everyone's here. Well then, my warmest greetings, everyone. Miss Alice, why would you... Well, it's been many years since this lantern last lit up. You can't blame me for thinking that one of the old friends from my youth may have decided to catch up again. Uh, why she sounds so coy all of a sudden? And if I recall correctly, we left this lantern in the care of the animal Archon Barbados. Hmm. You must be commended for uncovering an artifact entrusted to the god of wind himself. Tell me, are you sitting around my beloved tea party table? It's a real long table. Oh, so you are. I suppose this means even the animal Archon has granted you entry to this place. Was all of this Scarlet's doing? Wait, wait. Paimon's completely lost now. So what was this assembly you were talking about earlier? Oh, Miss Alice, would it be alright to leave the explanation of that to you? <laughs> well, you should be rewarded for making it all the way up here and activating the lantern. Now then. Let me tell you a long and ancient story. Ever heard of the Hexen Circle? As the spooky name suggests, it's a secret society. Once upon a time, it even challenged the animal Archon himself. But he replied, let us make music, not war, and resolve our conflicts through song. From then on, the mages would only ever convene in the woods, in the skies, on the edges of cliffs. At these tea parties, they discussed their stories and secrets and resolved their differences, as the tea and cakes bore witness to their pledge never to fight amongst themselves. Yesterday, I snuffed out the life of my beloved. He had grown old and was extremely sick. He loved me dearly, so I took his fate in my hands and ended his pain. I'm raising a son. Of all the children I had, he's the only one left. <laughs> but I suppose that still makes me a mother. My lifespan is nothing compared to yours, so I wish to leave you with my storybook. Actually, maybe you can pass it on to your children one day. Oh, this looks interesting. Let me scry. My dear sisters, 
We mustn't let prophecies threaten our bonds of friendship. Even the most frightening witch was once a little girl, and growing up can be so tough. Sometimes we all need to vent our troubles to the wind. Even if the nations go to war, or the sky falls down, the mages' tea parties shall forever be held around this table. That's right. We often met here to chat and have tea. But then, what about the part saying that if we light the lantern of utmost joy, we'd receive a supreme blessing? Oh, about that. <laughs> I never expected anyone other than Jay to actually read the full contents of that prophecy. It's a little embarrassing. The truth is, that prophecy was actually just a letter that we sent to Jay as a group the day before her wedding. Hmm. So it was indeed written by all of you. <laughs> I must thank you for resisting the urge to immediately reveal the truth to everybody, Albedo. Knowing you, you probably figured out everything the moment you laid eyes on the message. No, it took me a little longer than that. A flower that is not of this world. A guide who will never get lost. One who would never lie. And a legend that never ends. These four descriptions signify four individual mages. When a member of the organization had to leave the group to spend the rest of her days with her beloved, the other mages would write down this prophecy and send it to her to invite her for a final get-together. A flower that is not of this world signifies, of course, flowers that do not naturally exist in this world. This is the signature of R, full name Rhindaughter, also known as gold. If there's anyone in this world who could create a flower species that does not yet exist, it would be her. The guide who will never get lost is N, otherwise known as Nicole. You may not have encountered her yet, but she is a truly extraordinary woman who has made this world's direction and order her subject of study. Some of you may be fortunate enough to have already heard her voice. Like a prophetess, she will only speak to guide people toward the truth when a change has occurred in the world. She has a tendency to suddenly speak in someone's mind without any warning. <laughs> if one day you would be unfortunate enough to run into a truly dangerous situation, she may use her voice to guide the way forward for you. <sighs> I would have guessed that there are so many mysterious women in this world, and that they would all know each other. The one who would never lie is... me. I hope no one would take offense. It's just that I, Alice, or A for short, have always had a soft spot for those with sincerity and candor. As for a legend that never ends, you may not know M in person, but you've likely encountered one of her works. Have any of you ever read The Boar Princess? Huh? I'm pretty sure every child in Mondstadt has read that book. <laughs> it's also one of my favorite stories. M was an exceptional human writer who used her prose to teach me the meaning of grief. Don't you think such a person would deserve a seat at the mage's table? Paimon's getting more and more lost. It may sound hard to believe, but I can attest to everything that Alice has said. Jay was also a mortal who aged and passed on, leaving her title to her students and followers. Alice, you've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. It's now been centuries since the first of us took on her mantle. I've always wanted to meet you. Do you also want to become a mage? Title aside, I think I'm more interested in the meaning and purpose of the Hexen Circle. I used to think that the Hexen Circle was a group of women who could control the very fate of this world. But now, I've seen for myself that besides Jay, many other ordinary people were also among you. Do you think less of us now? No, not at all. My interest has been piqued, and I'm now even more drawn towards the idea of becoming a mage. You're right. I've never acknowledged any of Jay's successors. But you are different. You are much more fascinating than any of your predecessors. Oh, has someone finally piqued Aunt Alice's interest? Now 
is not a good time, Scarlet, but as soon as I am able, I will seek you out for a meeting. I want you to tell me all about Jay's married life back in her hometown. So the maid who received the prophecy letter from all of you was Jay? She left the Hexen Circle after getting married? Precisely. There was only one way the letter could have been interpreted. She would have known what we meant as soon as she saw the message. We were just asking one thing of her. Please come to see us again. Before you go and settle forever with your happiness, please come share some of it with your best friends and sisters. So, the Supreme Blessing actually meant... All journeys are fleeting and will eventually come to an end. What will give us the most fulfillment and happiness in the end are those who will greet us at our journey's destination. Dear child, I believe you can also understand what I am talking about. We women will always have many troubles and encounter pains and frustrations that will keep us up at night. But no matter how hard things may become, we will cross mountains and oceans to see our best friends again. Regardless of how many years have passed or how far the distance may be, as long as we can be with our beloved friends, our hearts will be filled with joy. To us mages, that's what being supremely blessed is all about. Oh. Uh, I still don't get it, but I do know that all the mages are Mom's best friends. <laughs> If you ask how I see it, the Hexen Circle is just a group of ladies that I spent my youth with. Anyway, I'll introduce some of the other members to you all later. I still have a few things to attend to, so this will have to do for today. Bye, Mom! Todoko says bye, too! Goodbye, darling, and farewell to all of our other friends as well. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Oh, now that I think of it, isn't it getting close to... That time of year? Yes, it's wind bloom again, Alice. It's also a special anniversary date. I'm sure you still remember. Yes, I do remember now. It was on this day many, many years ago that Jay tied the knot. Oh, just in time for the Festival of Love and Freedom. Everyone, please enjoy this year's wind bloom festival to the fullest. Whoa! Ah, Albedo! Why didn't you tell me we'd have to glide all the way back down? Uh, oh. Are you okay, Timaeus? Maybe you'd feel better if you just, you know, let it out. I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just oh, a little glider sick, that's all. You may want to look into getting your own gliding license when you have the time. It might prove helpful to you. Uh, okay. Sure thing. It sounds like you've still got something on your mind. Why don't you tell us? We're all happy to listen. <sighs> it's nothing, really. It's just... Well, Alice's story was really interesting and romantic. I won't argue about that. But still... <sighs> The whole thing wasn't quite what I was hoping for. Of course, I didn't actually expect the Supreme Blessing to be real, but... <sighs> Don't say that! None of this was your fault, Timaeus. Honestly, it's more on me for having agreed to be the Wimbloom Festival Special Ambassador. <sighs> Had I not asked for everyone's help, if anything, it should be my fault for finding that prophecy. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean to blame the two of you either. I just feel like uh, this whole adventure didn't really end on a high note, and we also didn't really get anything out of it. Hmm. But I'd say we still learned something new. Well, that aside, Timaeus, you still need to go to Liyue to apologize to Yingar, right? Do you want Kali and I to accompany you? Oh, Miss Yingar. Well, uh, I mean... I just really don't want her to get mad at me. Now that I've come back to my senses, oh, I really don't know what I should do. Hey, you three? You may want to look over there. Huh? Miss Yingar? 
Oh, so that's Miss Yingar? I've never met her before. Yep, that's her. And she actually came all the way to Mondstadt. Uh, I am so sorry, Miss Yingar. But, but how did you... I mean... <laughs> Are you so happy just to see me? I, uh, of course I am. I'm so happy that uh, I don't, uh... Sorry, I, I don't know what to say. I was ready to give you a harsh scolding. But now that I've seen you like this, I suppose I could let you off the hook. This You said you couldn't come to pick me up because of a very important matter, right? Well then, of course I had to come and find you instead. <laughs> Should we go see how they're doing? Why wouldn't? You'll get hit by a forest boar if you interrupt a couple's romantic conversation. Oh, really? Uh, we'll just leave them alone then. I am so glad to see Timaeus find his happiness. I have to say, I'm even more envious of you, Sucrose. You can be happy just to see others happy. And you gave me so much help without any expectations in return. Even though you said that we're very much alike, I still feel like you have a much bigger heart than I do. But if you say that, then I'd say I'm also nowhere near as brave or tenacious as you. I guess we have the same amount of positive qualities. They're just spread over different parts of our personalities. I've never visited Sumeru, or made many friends from outside of Mondstadt. I'm happy just to have met and become your friend. Maybe I'll get shy and flustered when I meet other people I don't know in the future. But that's okay too. Since we are so alike, you probably get what I'm trying to say. You just need to believe that all of your issues aren't really issues at all. But isn't it too late now for me to learn to accept myself? Uh, well... Hmm. Do you know anything about the blooming cycles of Cecilius? Um... I may have read about that in a book before. That's a topic that my parents used to talk about back when they were still dating. Surprising, right? To think that people would talk about that while on a date. My mom brought it up at dinner one time last month. She called my dad the most boring man she knew, and said that he even turned up late to a date once, all with a smile on her face. But she also said that learning is just another part of life. It's never too late to start something. As long as you recognize that it's something good for you to do. Hmm. Why don't you give it a try, Kale? Okay, I'll try my best. They're really having a great conversation. Paimon can't even find a moment to join in. <sighs> I nearly forgot. This is for you. This texture. Are these seeds? <sighs> yep. I believe I mentioned my sweet flower research to you before. These are the seeds of the sweet flower cultivars that I've worked on. It's nothing too special, but they're the best cultivars that I've made. So, I really hope that you'll like them. They're super sweet and easy to grow and keep. I'm also submitting them as my wind blooms for this year. I wish that the animal Archon could also see how lovely they are. Thank you. I'll plant them in the Avidia forest and take good care of them. Kale, please take these notes with you. I've heard that you've been working hard on your studies, so I've prepared some study materials for you at Sucrose's request. Feel free to look through them whenever you can find the time. Mondstadt's doors will always remain open to you. Uh, thank you so much. Really, I... I don't know what to say. I... I'm just really happy. Ah, Sucrose, now's your chance. Didn't you want to collect a breath of joy? <sighs> You're right. I almost forgot. Kali, can you exhale once into this test tube? I will save this breath of joy and use it in my research. Oh, really? May I? Of 
Of course. cloud of happiness, but now it flew away. Well, luckily, there's still some breath left in the test tube. I'll seal it up for now. I'll keep working on it, and let you know as soon as I have any breakthroughs in my research. Yeah, you can write to me. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I receive your letter. Oh, it looks like you found a new pen pal. Master Trinari! If your friendship was forged in a test tube, does that make you test friends forever? That's it. I think you've ruined Sumeru's reputation in Mondstadt beyond all hope of repair. All that matters is that I've enjoyed Mondstadt immensely. The dragon here possesses a majestic form. Oh, that reminds me. Traveler, this card back is for you. Sayano wanted you to have one for yourself. If I had to guess... I'd say he probably wants you to use it if you challenge him to a duel. I'm a master of the game. Do you dare challenge me? Can you believe this guy? Huh. Let's knock him off his high horse. W wait I've got something to give you, too. Huh? Kali has a gift for us? Yeah. I figured I should follow local Monsat customs and prepared a few small things themed after the Windbloom Festival. I made these bookmarks from Sumeru Roses at the hotel. I want to give them to Amber, Master Tainari, and Sino. During Windbloom, Monsetters offer flowers to the people most important to them. You three are family to me. But Tainari said that we're not anything like an academic family. He wouldn't write joint papers with us. Well, in this case, we can consider ourselves as regular siblings. And that should be just fine. <laughs> I agree. Oh, and here are some Padisara seeds as well. These are for the Traveler, Paimon, and everyone else from Mondstadt. Whoa, are these really for us? So, are these your chosen windblooms? Mm-hmm, one of them. Both Padisara's and Sumeru Roses are my windblooms. Although they're not native to Mondstadt, they are the flowers that can best express my feelings. I want to give them to the people I feel thankful for. To those who... I wish to accompany as we greet more seasons and future wind blooms together. The real blessing in life is when you are surrounded by people who you'd miss day and night, and who you'd want to see even if that meant crossing mountains and oceans to do so. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear you say that. <gasps> Sucrose, do you see that cloud over there? Huh? Doesn't it look... just like your test tube? <laughs> 